In alhamdulillah wa salat wa salam Allah wa rasulullah. We're continuing with our topic, Keys to Living Islam. And what does that mean? That means that the lectures that I'm giving, the classes that we're having now are focused on how to live and practice Islam the correct way, the ease in living Islam, the ease in practicing the true Islam. Despite how the people around you may look at you as being crazy, because that happens, you're going to find once you start living and practicing the true Islam, you're going to find a lot of people out there, other Muslims, who are going to look at you like you're crazy because you're the only one practicing it right. When they're not, they're going to try to get you to second guess yourself. They're going to try to get you to doubt yourself. They're going to get you to try to think that perhaps, you know, that you're the one wrong because like I gave examples because you're a Muslim woman and you don't cover your face. Islam doesn't tell us we have to cover our face. Muslim women do not have to cover their face. That's a fact. Or they're going to look at you like you're crazy because you do wear colors like red and yellow and green and blue. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing in Islam that forbids women from wearing colors. Or they're going to look at you like you're crazy because you have on pants. As long as your pants are not tight fitting, there's nothing wrong with you wearing pants in Islam either. So again, you know, when you start living and practicing the true Islam, the other Muslims around you are going to look at you like you're strange. So that's why we're doing uh, this whole series. I want you to learn the true Islam, the beauty of it. It's not an oppressive way of life. It's a beautiful way of life that makes sense. It's a beautiful way of life that appeals to the intellect. It appeals to the common sense too. And today we're going to speak about something as simple as naming your children. Even when it comes to naming your children, Islam teaches us that there are certain a certain procedure that we need to follow there are certain conditions we have to keep in mind even when it comes to naming our children because again Allah wants what's best for us first of all as Muslim parents we are obligated this is an obligation Allah has imposed the obligation upon you as a Muslim parent to name your children good names. This is one of the rights that our children have over us. Every child has the right to have a good name given to them by their parents. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us what some of the most best names are to Allah. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Verily, the names most beloved by Allah are Abdullah and Abdul Rahman, and the most truthful of them are Harith and Hamam, and the ugliest of them is Harb and Mura. Harb means war. Mura means bitterness. Harith means striving. Allah loves the name to strive. And Hamam is intending. So these are some good names, you know, that Allah likes. Abdullah, as you know, means the servant of Allah. Abdul Rahman, servant of the most merciful. These are names that Allah love for us to name our boys. So again, one of the obligations that we have as a parent is to make sure when we have children that we choose good, beautiful names for them. And other names, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to avoid. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not name your children or do not name your child ease or profit or successful or fortunate because maybe he won't grow up to be successful. Maybe he won't grow up to be fortunate. 
Maybe he won't grow up to earn a profit. So don't name your children names like this that are hard for them to live up to. So again, and also another reason why these are not good names to name your children is because these are all attributes of a law. How, why would you name a child successful? Only a law is successful. We're human beings. We go through ups and downs. Remember the life of the believer is filled with hardships and struggles. So why would you name your children successful? So again, avoid names like that for your kids. In fact, the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever he, a person would convert to Islam, if they had a name that was not appealing, the prophet would change their name to something good. For example, he changed the name of Asiya. He told her, you are beautiful. And he named her Jamila, which means beautiful. And he changed Ju Juaria. Her name was Bera. He changed it to Juaria. So again, the prophet we used to, you know, would change the name to something that was uh, better for them. If he came upon a companion who had a name that wasn't good for him. Also, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade he forbade, I repeat, he forbade. When you read a hadith that says the prophet forbade or prohibited, that means we can't do this. The prophet forbade a person to be called righteous. And I tell you guys all the time, you know a lot of Muslims who name their kids Taki and all of that, righteous and all of that. You no, know, the prophet didn't say don't name yourself stuff like that. Don't give your children names like that. Bera means righteous. Taki, righteous. Don't name your, uh, Takwa, Takwa rather. Takwa. Don't name your children names like that. Because those are names that only Allah knows. The prophet said, do not bear witness to your own self being righteous. Because only Allah knows who is righteous. But look how many Muslims are named Takwa. Why would you name yourself Takwa? Don't do that. He would also change the names that were bad. Like, for example, if he met a person who had the name Hazen. Hazen means rugged. He would change it to smooth. Rugged means harsh and hard. So he would change his name to smooth, to Sahel, which means smooth. Okay. So again, guys, understand, you know, be careful when we name our children. You want to pick good names that are not hard for the kid to live up to. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam changed the name of a man. There was a man who was named one who lies down. The Prophet was like, why did your parents name you a one who lies down? He said, I'm going to change your name to one who stands up. And then another person he met, their name was Baron. He said, why would your parents name you Baron? He said, I'm going to name you Green and, and Fruit. So again, be careful. Be careful when it comes to naming our children. Give them righteous good names. Okay. And again, uh, one of the questions that a lot of Muslim ask is, can we name our, our children after angels? There is nothing I repeat. There is nothing I repeat. There is nothing in Islam that forbids us from naming our children uh, after an angel. In fact, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, choose good names. And there is nothing wrong with naming yourself after righteous people and righteous beings. Okay, but a name like war, a name like uh, that's bad that brings about uh, uh, oppression, don't name your children names like that. Also, even when traveling, whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would travel somewhere, he disliked passing through cities or towns that had bad names too. 
For example, once he, when he was passing between two mountains, he asked, what are the names of these mountains? And he was told, well, that, this, these mountains are called disgraceful and shameful. The prophet said, why would somebody name two mountains disgraceful and shameful? He said, so I'm not going to go through them. He said, I'm not going to go through anything that's called disgraceful or shameful. And remember, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he changed Medina to its name. The city of Medina, its original name was Yathrib, which means censure. He changed it to Medina, which means the, the, the city of lights. So again, guys, be careful when it comes to naming. And there are certain names that we should never give our kid, like El Malik, the king, because only Allah is the king of all kings. You look at some of these famous uh, movie stars and, and hip hop singers, you know, they name their children king and prince and, and all the, the king and all of this stuff. This is haram. This is a sign of arrogance. The judge of all judges. They refer to Judge Judy as being a judge of all judges. A stock for law. Only Allah is the judge of all judges. And we should never name anybody master either because only Allah is Lord and only Allah is master. You know how in some cultures they refer to you as Lord this, like in the English culture, Lord, 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 Lord Bartholomew, Lord this. You're not a Lord. Only Allah is the Lord. Allah is the Lord of all mankind and jinn. So you don't refer to another human being as being the Lord or a Lord either. These are names that belong only to Allah. So again, today's little class, a little lecture was short and also, you know, a little different. You know, be careful when it comes to naming your children because again, that's another obligation. You are obligated as a parent to choose your kids' names. Allah is going to ask you on a day of judgment, why did you name your child a bad name? Why did, didn't you fulfill your right as a parent? Why didn't you fulfill the obligation as a parent of giving your children a beautiful name? So be careful when it comes to that. On that note, we'll stop right here. If you guys have any questions or comments, inshallah, you can type them on the screen.